God, we love you and we thank you again for uh, this new day. It's a gift and uh, Lord, we uh, commit ourselves to uh, steward this gift that you have placed in our possession and we pray, Lord, that this day we would make a difference in the lives of uh, the students and uh, the community around us. Uh, we ask you to open our hearts and our minds and our ears uh, as we hear from your word this morning and that you challenge us and uh, through your Holy Spirit change us. We love you and thank you for it in your name. Amen. We're in the second week of the series on Elijah and um, I want to open up with uh, the same verse we started with from James last week. Uh, as we're these first few weeks talking about the prayer life of Elijah. Uh, and I already have your first fill in the blank filled in because I did not erase it. So uh, you got a head start. Elijah was a man just like us. Just like us. I, I just want you to let that sink into your mind through these weeks that we're talking about Elijah. Uh, because we're... <laughs> We're going to see him do some pretty incredible things. Uh, Clarissa, that is amazing. Please tell us. You're a wallflower? <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. All right. Sorry, I'm very easily distracted, as you can tell. Um, but very good. It's awesome. It's awesome. All right. Lesson over. I don't think we need anything else, right? That was pretty good. Uh, anyway, I, I think it's amazing the, the, the way that James tells us Elijah was a man just like us. Um, we read through the Bible so many times, and I think we get this idea of these, of these men and women in the Bible that they were somehow superhuman. And that the things that they did were just um, uh, so miraculous that they are out of our grasp. But at the end of the day, they were everyday, ordinary people that walk this earth just like we are. Uh, and, and I love that James reminds us of this. Elijah was a man just like us. Uh, he prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly. Now, last week we talked about that his prayer was a humble prayer. When he was on Mount Carmel, he, he uh, buried his head in his knees and, in a, as a sign of humility as he, as he prayed to the Lord. And so we learned last week that when we come before the Lord, we should come before Him humbly. Um, but it says he prayed earnestly that it would not rain that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. So we're going to use that second part. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. So we can see in this, he prayed specifically. All right, so, so today we're going to talk about the idea that effective prayers are specific prayers. He just didn't pray for the Lord to show a sign. He prayed specifically that it would not rain. All right. Now, now we see that through Elijah's life that this idea of praying specifically is, is uh, a pattern. All right. And, and we see it through any of the great prayers in the Bible. You find that they're not just generic in nature, but they are very specific in the way that God's people go before him and ask things of him. Um, a, a, again, a great example of this in Elijah's life, a, a sort of a Weird example, but an awesome example. Uh, 1 Kings 17, uh, before Mount Carmel, right? Elijah's in the home of the widow, and uh, God had already done this amazing miracle of, of promising to provide bread and oil, or flour and oil in this widow's house uh, in, this, in this three and a half year period of drought. And, and so it was just like this endless supply of flour and oil, which is amazing, right? And, and then, while Elijah is in this house, this lady's son dies. And uh, so you can imagine, there's mourning. There, this, this lady is distraught. She tells Elijah. Uh, and in, in 1 Kings 17, it says, or verse 21, it says, Then he stretched himself out on the boy. When I get this, when, when, I, when I read this, I'm just thinking of, of how weird this must have seemed in this house. 
for this boy to be lying there, lifeless, and, and for this prophet of God to just literally stretch himself out on the, the boy. Um, in our mind, it's probably hard to get a, a picture of that. It just it feels, feels weird, right? But, but listen to this. He, he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. So again, you can just see this idea of specific prayer that Elijah, Elijah prayed. Um, I, I've got to be honest with you, so many times in my life, uh, when, I, when I look back upon my life, I find myself in, in private times of prayer sort of being wishy-washy in my, in my prayer life and in the prayers and the petitions that I put before God. Uh, very, at times, very nonspecific. Uh, uh, praying things like, God, God, be with us today. God, uh, give me, give me strength today. Um, but, but not really getting down to the nitty gritty and asking God specifically what it is that, that I'm in need of. Um, sort of, I've, I've been working with Melanie some on the, uh, spiritual emphasis week and and last week we had a meeting and she was asking me something and she said what do you think about this and um i said well i think that'll be good she said um yeah you, you said that with your lips but your facial expression said you didn't think that would be good she said i need you to just tell me what you're thinking here you know and and um yeah so i think we do that with god sometimes right uh like we're, we're crying out to God and we're just sort of, yeah, you, you know, you know. And, and I believe God's maybe in heaven saying, just tell me what's on your heart. Tell me what it is that you want. Tell me what it is, please. I want, I want to hear this. Um, so we, we see this as a pattern throughout, throughout Scripture. Uh, James 4.2 tells us, you do not have because you do not ask God. And I wonder how many prayers... Uh, how many prayers have gone unanswered simply because they haven't been uttered from our lips? Um, I love love the story I, I read this week or illustration I read from a guidepost article uh, on this subject. Someone cried out to the Lord. A mother cried out to the Lord, Oh Lord, have mercy on me. God replied, What do you want me to do for you? Please come to me. What? do you want me to do for you? Please bless me. What do you want me to do for you? Help me. What do you want me to do for you? Well, what I really need is enough patience not to scream at my little boy who just spilled his juice all over the new carpet. Ah, well, I can do that. And I can also remind you to remind him to put a lid on his cup from now on. I think uh, perhaps that is the way many times we come before the Lord. Bless me, help me, uh, do this, do that, but never really getting at the point with God. One example of this in Scripture is blind Bartimaeus, and I think I have those Scriptures in your, in your notes. Um, then they came to Jericho as Jesus and His disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man by the name of Bartimaeus was sitting by the road begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but shouted all the more. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and called him. Or Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing back his cloak, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. Now in my mind, it's pretty obvious. Right? Uh, this guy was blind. Um, you know, I, I, I think looking at the situation, it seemed pretty obvious what this man needed. Uh, and, and he was crying out to God all this time, Lord, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. Well, Jesus heard those cries, right? And, and yet he still asked him, what? 
I know you want me to have mercy, but what is it that you want me to do for you? I want you to get that in your spirit today because again, maybe, maybe you're not like me, but, but I'm guilty of so many times just coming before the Lord. Lord, help me. Strengthen me this day, God. Help me with, help me with this. Help me with that. Bless me here. Bless me there. And I think the Lord's looking back at us and He's saying, but what is it? What is it that you want me to do for you? I know you want my blessings. I know you want my strength. I know you want my help. But what is it that you really, really want me to do for you? Jesus asked him, the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. What a powerful, powerful story. I, I want to just use this uh, to just give you five thoughts on, on praying specifically. And again, this, these five points uh, I got from the, the same Guidepost article uh, from 2015, and I can't remember the guy's name who, who wrote it, uh, Bob Hostetler. All right, so these are points that he made in an article on praying specifically. Uh, Five reasons why we should pray specific prayers. Number one, uh, it clarifies it clarifies our minds. Clarifies our minds. It gets clear in our minds what exactly we want. We see this in Bartimaeus' life. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Jesus is 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 needing Bartimaeus to see. Hey. I know you need mercy, but tell me what it is that you really want me to do for you. Having mercy on him could have looked like a lot of different things. Could have looked like Jesus asking one of his disciples to give him a little change or to go buy him some food, right? Could have been anything. Would have been, a, would have been an act of mercy towards this guy. But Jesus wanted him to get clear in his mind, it's not just mercy that you're seeking in this, in this moment. There's something very specific that you want, and I need you to get that clear in your minds. And, and sometimes I, I think that we are afraid to maybe voice what it is we specifically want because maybe, maybe we, we, we think that, um, maybe we're afraid we'll be disappointed if we don't get the answer that we're seeking. And if we put it out there specifically, then, then maybe we feel that we put too much of ourselves out there. We've made ourselves too vulnerable. Maybe we're afraid we're going to offend God in some way, as if God could be offended by one of our requests. Uh, I, I'm just a believer that we are to be audacious in our request to God. And, and you know what? He has a way of letting us know if it doesn't line up with His will. Uh, but... but we need to get clear in our minds exactly what is it that we are wanting God to do for us or needing God to do for us. Secondly, uh, it helps us to define our needs. Often in prayer, um, you know, I, I have asked God for something, and, and even after I've asked Him, I've, I've heard myself saying something like, well, that's not exactly what I was, what I was wanting or what I was, what I was needing. Uh, it's really that other thing that, that I need God to do. Um, Lord, bless me. Bless me. Uh, praying that won't lead me to recognize that I don't need to raise... Um, I, I, don't need to, uh, I don't need God to really bless me. I need Him to give me wisdom about a decision that I'm going to make. Uh, and so it helps to clarify in our minds or define in our minds what exactly it is we're needing God to do. Thirdly, it shows a dependence upon God. It shows a dependence upon God. Um, and fourth, it makes us more alert, more alert to the answers. How will I ever know that a, that a prayer is answered if I haven't been specific in my request? For, for blind Bartimaeus, you, you think about this, the prayer of, Lord, have mercy on me, could have been answered in so many ways. But that really wasn't the request of his heart, was it? The request of his heart was, Lord, heal me. I want to see. But as long as he was just saying, have mercy on me, as I said a moment ago, that mercy could have took on so many different forms. That mercy could have been seen in some act of charity. 
uh, giving him some bread to eat or some money. Uh, it, it could have been seen in any number of ways. But, but it, the only way that he would truly know the ant or that his prayer has been answered the way that he needed it answered or wanted it answered was if he was specific in the way he prayed it. Um, a few years ago, Tyra and I um, were raising money for a for a, a water well at an orphanage that we had we had built in memory of our son, and this orphanage was needing uh, a new well and. We, we at the time didn't have a lot of money and we made a commitment uh, to, this, to this well that was really above the amount of money that we had, right? And so we said, and, and I foolishly made the mistake of standing up before the congregation and saying, and Tyra and I are going to start it off with this amount of money. And I look at Tyra and we both realize we don't have that amount of money. So... We, we started coming together every, every day and praying, uh, and, and we had a specific number, and we, we put that before the Lord every day, and we started having garage sales. We started emptying out our, our house selling stuff. I sold golf clubs, which was a huge deal for me. God, remember that sacrifice. <laughs> right? um, sold bicycles, sold all kinds of stuff. And we still come up to the, to the last day when this money was due and we're, we're $500 short. Um, we had exhausted our personal savings in this. We had sold so much stuff. So it was one of those things that $500 might not seem like a lot, but we'd already put in everything that we had. We'd already sold everything we could sell. It's the day of. It's like, Lord, we need $500 to fulfill this commitment. So we came before the Lord once again. This offering was just a few hours away, and I had two golf clubs that hadn't sold yet, so I get an email from a guy on Craigslist that said, hey, I'll buy those two golf clubs. It still wasn't going to be the, uh, the, uh, the amount that we needed, but it was something. So I go up to Starbucks to meet this guy. This guy doesn't show up, and I'm just, like, at this point, wanting to take those golf clubs and just use them as a beating stick on something. I'm so mad, right? I'm like, God, how could this be? And this guy didn't even show up. We needed $500, right? And, and I think these two golf clubs, they were just two wedges. I think I was going to get $100 for the both of them, right? And so we're still going to be $400 short. At that time, this man walks in who has shorts on. He has black and white polka dot toenail polish on. Uh, bald head, looks like Mr. Clean. Uh, just real muscular, burly dude. He comes in and he sits by me and, and uh, we, we talk. And I said, man, I got to go. Got to go to church. And he said, well, what are you doing at Starbucks? I said, I supposed to be meeting a guy to sell golf clubs. He said, well, what do you have? I said, I just have a couple of wedges. So he says, well, let me see him. I might be interested. So we go out to my car. And uh, he looks at these wedges. I said, man, I used to have a, a set of wedges like this. And he said, I'll, I'll buy them. And I said, great. And he just put money in my hand. I didn't even look if it was the $100, if it was $20. I'm just like done with the situation. I get in the car and I just start unloading $100 bill, $100 bill, $100 bill, $100 bill, $500 exactly. And I thought, oh my goodness. I call Tyra. I'm in tears. I'm like, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. It's exactly what we need for this. And, and Tyra was like, well, it's exactly what we've been praying for though, right? And, and not only did that happen, but that morning that man came to church and I don't even know how he knew that where our church was because I didn't. I was so spiritual and pastoral. I didn't even give an invitation for him to join us to church. <laughs> that man shows up at church that day, sees the offering that we take, and I guess realizes where the money was going to. And he comes up to me afterwards and just gives me a big hug and says, "That was beeping awesome, like right in the middle of church." <laughs> and he says, "No, really, that was beeping awesome." The next week he comes back, he gives his heart to Jesus. The next week he brings his family back and they give their heart to Jesus. 
Uh, and I end up baptizing both him and his family over the next couple of months, and it's just this amazing miracle. But it started with us praying this specific prayer, and, and it was such a faith builder for us to see God work in that way. Uh, but we would have never known that answer if we hadn't prayed specifically and made our needs specifically known to God. That miracle wouldn't mean as much to us. If we'd have just said, Lord, we need money, if we need money, any amount of money would have been God providing money, right? But for us, it was so inspiring because it was the exact amount that we had been praying to God for to help us build this well over in Thailand. So for us, it was so inspiring, which leads to our fifth point. When we pray specifically, it does increase our faith. It increases our faith. I believe that Elijah was able to pray that powerful prayer on Mount Carmel because he had prayed that powerful prayer in that widow's home over, over her son. And I believe he was able to pray that prayer because he had prayed a prayer for God to provide flour and oil, and he saw God do that. And every step of the way, there was this progression in faith where when he needed to come before the Lord with another request, his faith was already at a higher level where he could come before the Lord with that request. And based on God's track record, Based on what he had seen God do in the past, he knew that there was no request that was too audacious to bring to God. And so he was willing to bring to God these amazing requests on Mount Carmel, these amazing requests afterwards, bringing rain down from heaven. So when we pray specifically and we see those prayers answered, it increases our faith. All right, I love that our administration here at Vice has, has challenged us over the last year to pray specifically. They just didn't say, hey, pray, pray for enrollment to be up, right? We want that. But I remember last year they gave us, let's pray specific numbers over each of our classes, right? And as we see those, as we see those numbers accomplished, it builds our faith, right? Wait a minute. We have how many kids now, Amy? 15 kids. That's what we've been praying for. Isn't that amazing? That just blows my mind. And that builds our faith. And I love the fact that they give us these specific goals to pray over. It's, a, it's amazing. But let your, let your faith be built as you see God answer those specific prayers that we pray. I know our time is up, so let's pray and ask God's hand to be upon us today. God, we love you. We thank you so much for this day. We ask you, Lord, that you help us to be like Elijah as we come before you in prayer. Let us not just be a people who pray out in generalities, but let us be people who come before you specifically with our needs, Lord, that lays it before you. Uh, Lord, you know our heart just like Bartimaeus's heart, but Lord, help us to speak it out, to speak it out so it's clear, to speak it out so it's clear, Lord, in our minds, so it's clear when, when the answer comes, Lord, we know exactly where this answer came from, and it was your hand and your hand alone, Lord. God, we thank you for this, and we ask for your help as we come prayerfully before you every day of our lives. We love you and thank you in your name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day.